Well, greetings. It is Wednesday. It is time for our Lenten service. I want you to invite, like, and share. This morning, our devotional speaker is Chaplain Brent Folkerman. He does an amazing job down at the Calhoun County Jail. Brent has been a part of this now for several years. I'm grateful that our church supports that ministry, and I certainly encourage other churches to do so. Uh, so I want you now to be blessed by the Lenten experience. Our worship leaders will be leading us in music. Chaplain Folkerman will be sharing the word of God with us. Our emphasis is a faith that will see you through. Amen. Come on now and let's, let's enjoy this time of devotional Lent. Well, good morning, and we'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are God alone. Your thoughts and your ways are high above our ways. You are good. And so with the author of Proverbs 3, we say we trust in you with all our hearts. And we do not lean to our own understandings. We hand every area of our lives over to you, acknowledging that you know best for each situation. Lord, we ask that you would direct our ways. And while it's easy for us to worry and to take control of our lives, our families and our futures, we confess that you belong on the throne, not us. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.
something only in thy merit. Would I seek the face? Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by the grace. Savior, Savior. heard Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That when I looked at this passage I thought it was kind of interesting um, there was an outline to it. Uh, when we see this there are actually three commands. It starts off with trust in the Lord with all your heart. The second command is lean not on your own understanding. And the third is, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And those three commands then have a result. The result is, he shall direct your paths. And uh, I thought that was kind of neat, so I'm going to break those verses down, because there's a lot of information in here that uh, you might skim over, having just read it, read it um, the first time. First of all, it starts off with, trust in the Lord, your, in the Lord which really means put your confidence in God. Not in part, but in whole, with your whole heart, right? with all your heart. And that's kind of an interesting part. Um, first command is trust. Trust in the Lord. Put your confidence in the Lord. Completely trust Him. And that's kind of hard to do sometimes, but we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the second command Lean not on your own understanding. Well, if we're not supposed to rely on our own understandings, what are we supposed to rely on? And what this passage is trying to say is that we should rely on God's teachings or God's understanding. Our role here is not to, to think we know it all. When we're trusting God, we are now trusting what he teaches as well. Uh, and it's easy to rely on things of this world. It's easy to rely on money. It's hard to do a lot without money. So you have to have money, but how do you, how do you feel when you leave the house and realize, oh, I left my wallet on the couch or on the, on, the, on the table, and I don't have any money with me right now? Is there a little bit of a panic, maybe? Um, maybe not for the, the current generation. The current generation is more worried about their cell phone. Where did my cell phone go? I left the house. I don't have it. And uh, it, it's kind of a, a feeling of insecurity creeps in without your money, without your wallet, without your cell phone, without things that you typically have. Uh, I want to talk about another form of leaning on understanding or our own understanding, and that would be le leaning on the world's teachings. Um, and a real simple explanation of that would be, or example of that would be evolution. Evolution is a scientific theory. And the fact that it's a theory means that it's an educated guess. They don't know that evolution happened. They just see a bunch of things, they connect some dots, and they hope that they got the picture right. Now, the problem with evolution is that it tries to explain the origins of life without including God. 
There is no God in evolution, or at least the evolution that most people teach. It all happened on its own, without any creator, without any, any thoughtful process. Um, and since, they, since scientists cannot prove that God exists, they assume that he doesn't exist. Now they have a problem. How did life start? Well, using their limited knowledge, their own understanding, they make multiple assumptions and come up with the theory of evolution. This is an example of a worldly knowledge. And God is cautioning us in this passage not to rely too much on the knowledge that does not come from him. It doesn't mean that we can't rely on some things. It doesn't mean that all knowledge is bad. But our knowledge on earth needs to be fact-checked with the knowledge we get from God. Um, as Christians, we have an explanation of creation in Genesis. Um, there are also references in Psalms and Colossians as well as other places in the Bible. Uh, probably the most famous one would be the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was there in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. We have a creation account from a reliable source. We may not have undeniable evidence, but we have a trustworthy source. The Bible is God's word and it's reliable. While I might not be able to understand everything that it teaches, I can be confident that everything it teaches is true. We do not need to lean on the world's understanding. <clears throat> Acknowledging him, our third command. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledging him is not just saying, yeah, God, you did it, thank you. It's not saying, thank you for a blessing, so that's part of it. The word acknowledge in Hebrew actually means to know. Know him. Know God in all your ways. In other words, what we're supposed to do is that we're supposed to know, we're supposed to be aware of and understand God and apply that to our life. Another way of saying this would be discern God's will. What does he want in this situation? Understanding God is understanding his will. Understanding who God is and what he wants us to do. And then the fourth one, the result of these three commands, is he shall direct your paths. In other words, God will make a way for it to happen. The idea here of direct, um, actually the Hebrew word can mean make straight. It can mean consider correct. It can also mean be pleased or smooth and level. So the result of following God's commands, of trusting in him, leaning on his understanding on our own, and acknowledging, knowing him, getting close to him, the result of those things is that he will be pleased with what we choose to do. Why? Because we do it for him. He will be pleased. He will, he will make straight. He will make our path easier. Not necessarily easy. I'll, I'll give a story about that in a minute. But he will make our paths, he will take obstacles out of our way. Um, for an example... Well, I did not choose to go into jail ministry. Uh, God chose jail ministry for me. And um, I started back in 2005. In 2005, uh, I was going to church, feeling called to the ministry. Didn't know what, didn't know where, didn't know how. I just knew that God wanted me some way, some form to do something different than what I already was. And at that time, I was in sales. I was uh, had a good job, well-paying job. Um, and it was in software sales. And... Uh, I kept telling God, yeah, I'll, I'll go into ministry, I'll, I'll look into it, and I did, I looked into it, and never got past looking into it for 20 minutes and walking away. And then finally, in 2008, the housing crash hit. The housing market collapsed, and everybody was losing their jobs. 
a little high exaggeration, but a lot of people were losing their jobs. The unemployment rate was over 30%. And I started thinking to myself, why would I leave a job where I'm getting paid and I, and I know my, my bills are going to get paid and I know I'm going to have food on the table? Why would I leave that to go to seminary and pay money to someone else that I don't have coming in? I was worried about my own security. Well, God knew I was dragging my feet. So in February of 2009, I got a call. And I was told that I was being let go, that I was being downsized. And that hurt. That hurt a lot. But it was actually God taking away my excuse. See, there was an obstacle for me to follow him, and that was my job as sales, as a salesman. My job as a salesman, I relied on it so much that I didn't let God lead and by being downsized, this was actually God's blessing me and taking away a chain or a, 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 a something that was holding me back. <clears throat> uh, without my job as an excuse, I, was fi I finally uh, started following God. A little reluctantly at first, but eventually I started following God and I went to seminary and went through my classes, and, and I was blessed when that happened. Uh, I was able to receive scholarships, which paid for approximately half of my, my schooling. And so I was, um, it was a beautiful thing that God did for me. But he had to change my perspective on what is security. Rather than having a job and having money in the bank and, and having all of these worldly things, God taught me to trust him. And that he would get me through what the world might call a bad situation. But he would get me through the situation and I would be on a better path. So in, in ways, a little bit of ways, my, uh, my journey parallels our, pa parallels, excuse me, our passage today. I trusted God, but I didn't trust God with all of my heart, with all of my well-being, with all of my things. I didn't trust him when it came to money. I didn't trust him when it came to feeding my family and paying my bills. I trusted God with other things, but I was holding back. And I was using those as excuses to keep me from doing what God wanted to do. Uh, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. The more I allowed God to lead me, the easier my path became. I'm not going to say that all of my obstacles went away. I still had to find ways to pay for seminary. Uh, I still had to find ways to feed the family and take care of my other obligations. And don't get me wrong, I, didn't, I did still try to negotiate with God. I, I thought that I was going to go in, not as a chaplain, or as a pastor, of a church, I thought I was going to be a chaplain at a hospital, or maybe in a hospice setting. And then, in 2012, I was in an internship, and at that internship I was introduced to Dave Mason, the jail chaplain at the time. And Dave invited me into the jail to do ministry, and I was terrified. I did not want to do that. As a matter of fact, two years before that, in 2010, I had toured Kent County Jail. And I remember thinking, how can I feel sorry for all of these people who have done something wrong and deserve to be in here? Amazing how much God can work in a man's heart, or a woman's heart, in two short years. Because in 2012, when I went into the jail ministry, I went in allowing God to lead, not negotiating, not trying to find a different path, not trying to find the way I wanted to do it, but allowing Him to lead. And when I did, doors started opening. There were more opportunities at the jail. Things started happening that way, and quickly I realized that this was not just an opportunity for me, but this became a passion for me. I started truly caring about these men and these women that I were meeting that I was meeting behind 
the, the bars and in a situation where they were in, in trouble, in pain, and struggling with life. And I had a God who provided me with a message of hope and of salvation. Maybe something they had never heard before. That they were worthy of love. That they are worthy of His attention. That they're worthy of being saved and, and Jesus dying for them to save, their, save them from their sins. A new message. A new hope. I never thought I'd be in the jail. But God made obstacles go away, including obstacles that I created in order to have His will be done. When I looked at these verses, I saw something kind of interesting. Um, I saw these three commands with a result. Here are the three commands. If you follow them, here's a result. But I, I also started looking at it kind of backwards. And I, and I read the psalm, or the, the uh, proverb, I, excuse me, backwards. And when I did that, it, it kind of gave me a new perspective. And I'd like to share that with you as well. You see, our goal, or my goal on earth, is to follow God. I've come to that point in my, in my life. I've realized I'm not the one in charge. He is. And so my goal is to have God direct my paths. It's to have God smooth things out and remove obstacles that don't need to be in the way. It's to uh, have God guide me in the decisions that I make. As a matter of fact, I, I'd like God to make my decisions obvious. So I don't have to struggle with, do I do thing A or thing B or thing C? And the closer I get to God, the more evident those things become. I want God to be pleased in everything that I do. And when I do that, it's because He is directing my path, not I. So in order for God to direct my path, in order for me to reach that goal, I must seek to understand God's will in my life, which is how I acknowledge Him in all my ways. In order to reach my goal, I need to submit everything to Him. That includes my money, my television, the books that I read, the games that I play, my work, even volunteering. All of these things have potential to interfere with my goal. If I'm not using my money in the way that God wants me to use it, I'm using it for myself and I'm, different, I'm, I'm deviating from God's plan. If I'm watching TV shows that God does not want me to watch or reading books, then I am doing things that keep God's plan from, from being fulfilled. I'm putting obstacles in the way. Even in work and in volunteering, if I'm volunteering for the wrong reason, maybe I'm, I need to reevaluate and see what is it that God truly wants me to do rather than what other people around me expect me to do. There is nothing wrong with being with enjoying our blessings from God. There's nothing wrong with watching television. There's nothing wrong with reading books. The only thing that's wrong is if they are pulling us away from God. Uh, that's, uh, the, the, in order to reach my goal of having God direct my paths, I have to realize I cannot rely on myself or the world and what it, cons it considers to be securities. I want you to think back to a time where you lost your car keys. Or maybe you locked the house and shut the door to realize that you left your keys sitting on the table. If you think back, there was a panic moment there. There was, a, there, was a, there was a fear. What am I going to do? And there was this, this instant dread inside of you. Your mind just starts to race. You start to get that sinking, sick feeling in your, your stomach. And you start wondering, what am I going to do? Well, 
obviously that happened in the past and you've overcome that, that situation. In the moment, it seemed like it was the end of the world. It seemed like it was terrible. But yet, now, looking back, it wasn't as terrifying as it seemed back then. While it was only temporary, it seemed so important in the moment. And, and maybe you have that same, feel, same feeling if you leave your house without money or your wallet or, as I said earlier, your cell phone. That panic. What if I need it? Well, don't we have a God that we can trust? Can't we lean not on our physical things, but on God's guidance? It's too, really easy to rely too much on worldly securities or our own abilities. But what God truly wants is he wants us to learn from him. He wants to teach us what is important. He wants to teach us what is right. He wants to teach us how to love and care for others. He does not want us only to look to the world to fix our problems. He wants us to trust that he will take care of us. The season's over now, but back in October and November of last year, everyone was worried about what was going to happen politically which president, which senators were going to be elected. There was a lot of emphasis on getting the right person, the right president to lead the United States, the right senators to lead Congress. But in the end, that all was a passing moment. It seemed important at the time, but our worries, our concerns are not what happened in November, or who is the president, or who's in Congress. Instead, our worries and concerns are not temporal, but eternal. Who is our God? What does he want from us? How can we follow him? There have been bad governments in the past, thinking back to Rome and the persecution of Christians. There are going to be bad governments in the world today. China is persecuting Christians. And other areas of the world are as well. But yet there's still a God who's in control. And we put our trust and our faith in Him, not in the world. In order to reach my goal and have God direct my path, I need to learn how to trust him with all of my heart. God always wants what's best for me. But yet, it doesn't mean that everything that happens to me is going to be good or pleasant. For instance, if I want to learn how to control my anger, I need to be angry. I can't just be happy because if I'm happy, I have no anger to control. So God has to allow me to be in a situation where I get upset, I get angry, and then learn to control my temper. That's a tough situation because I want to handle things my way and do things in a way that, that satisfies my anger rather than satisfies my God. So in order to reach my goal, I must learn to trust in the Lord with all my heart. When we read these three verses in order, we have three commands. Trust in the Lord your God with your heart, with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him. And we get a result. God shall direct your path. But when you look at them in reverse order, we understand that our goal is allowing God to direct, straighten, and smooth the paths of life. And this is accomplished by seeking God in everything that we do, not just on Sundays when thing, or when things are going bad, by learning from God, not from the world, and by not thinking that we know what is best, and by completely trusting 
that God will take care of us. When we do these three things, we will reach our goal. Thank you. Well, God bless you. I hope that you have been inspired as we have taken some time to reflect upon the faith that will see us through. Thank you, Chaplain Folkman, for your devotional words, and thank you for our praise and worship leaders for providing the music. I pray that you've been blessed by our time together. Join us here again next week, same place, same time as we continue to focus on a faith that will see you through. Thank you.